And hello, everybody out there in internet land. I'm Tigris Osborne. I'm NAFA's Director of Community Outreach. And if you have made it here, I guess you probably already know that NAFA is the National Association to Advance Fat Acceptance. Um, I am joined today by the incomparable Juicy Delight. Uh, some of you may know that a couple of weeks ago, we um, had a very special International No Diet Day uh, version of our NAFA webinar series. And we had uh, Juicy reflect about the um, incredible fat flash mob that she planned for International No Diet Day a few years ago. We had some technical difficulties and we didn't get a recording of that webinar. So Juicy has graciously agreed to chat with me again. Um, we're not gonna dance with you today, but I will include um, in the description of this video some places where you can dance along with Juicy and see Juicy performing. Um, let me tell you about a little bit about Juicy and then we will jump right in. Um, Juicy Delight is an actress, dancer, producer, and activist based in Oakland, California. In 2006, she founded Rubenesque Burlesque to highlight and celebrate fat bodies in the burlesque world. As artistic director of Rubenesque Burlesque, she led her troupe to the Edmonton Burlesque Festival, the Toronto Burlesque Festival, Alterna Alternatives, where they won the Top Banana Award, the Hollywood <laughs> Burlesque Festival, where they won Most Comedic and Best Troupe, and of course, uh, the world famous Burlesque Hall of Fame. Juicy is also the founder and co-choreographer co co of the Fat Flash Mob, one of the most celebrated fat community events of the last decade. The 2014 event was captured in the documentary Fat Mob by Julie Wyman, which we're going to take a short uh, peek at together. And the film was featured in the San Francisco Short Film Festival, as well as FS, SF Doc Fest, Sebastopol Doc Fest, and, Mexico, and in Mexico City at Docs MX. Juicy is the beloved MC of many Bay Area events, including the annual Big Moves Dance Show, debauchery at the iconic White Horse in Berkeley, and her own monthly production, First Friday Follies. She is also known as the author and star of the acclaimed one-woman show, Angry Black Woman. Ladies and gentlemen, and friends of all gens, this is Juicy Delight. Juicy, thank you for joining me. Yay! <laughs> um, Hi. So so since we um uh since we wanted to focus a little bit on the fat flash mob let's start there and then we'll go go through a little bit more of the other things in your bio um tell me what what was the flash flash mob what is the fat flash mob the fat flash mob was um me really wanting to uh do something out loud for myself and I wanted to do it with other other fat people, just a proclamation of being okay in my body and not not hating myself for being in a fat body and uh, and dancing movement because uh, the assumption is that all we do is lay around and if we do that's okay, but many of us don't. Um, so yeah, that's that's what that was. That was me uh, trying to get people to celebrate their bodies as I was celebrating my body. So imagine someone's joining us today who has no idea what a flash mob is. Mm -hmm. What is that and why did you choose that as the activity for this kind of celebration? Um, because flash mobs can be kind of, uh, they're, they're political. They have an, they, they, they have an air of a uh, of political statement. No, they are a political statement. Um, a flash mob is where you pick a mundane place or a heavy populated place where people are just milling around and you kind of do a performance. You do a performance in front of a bunch of strangers and then you go away. So like in the, in the movie, it's like you come in and then pow, and then you go. Um, so that's kind of like a flash, bam, you're in, you're out. Actually, so, let's, let's, if our tech will coordinate with us, uh, will cooperate mm -hmm. with us, let's actually show that quick moment from the movie. Um, audience, what I want to show you is a little piece of Julie Wyman's um, short film documentary called Fat Mob. Um, Julie participated in the mob with us. There was also another set of filmmakers, uh, Ian Car Carruthers and his team from Foolish Tree Films, who did some um, documenting of the mob, which you can find on YouTube. We're going to look at a quick click of Julie's, uh, Julie Wyman's Fat Mob. And this was participating, so hopefully it will. Let's 
actually. Thank you for bearing with me for one second. Mob. Love that word. When people feel safe in the mob, they'll dance louder and freer and not be afraid and not be ashamed. A flash mob is a bunch of people go somewhere publicly, do something, whether it's dance or protest or something, and then go away like a flash. The twist is that we're all going to have uh, fatter bodies, which are often not seen dancing, especially in public. I know people don't always think of flash mobs as protests, and I think most flash mobs are not. But for this one, it feels like a, like a protesting of societal expectations. Seven, eight, There's a one, stereotype eight, that fat people don't move three, at all. Four, five, and six. And you're awesome. Very nice. Um, so the, that was some folks, um, rehearsing at the end of that clip. How did yes. you prepare for the mob? Um, when you, uh, well, first thing was first was, um, I put the word out, uh, for accountability, <laughs> uh, so that I wouldn't back out of it. And then, uh, me and Alana Kelly, uh, I love her. We're still friends. Me and Alana Kelly, uh, choreographed it and then. We found a space where, and I invited people to come learn the flash mob, gave them the date, the time. Um, so we met there a few times for about an hour or so uh, where we rehearse and, uh, and talk about the flash mob. And that was Alana Kelly in the, in the brief clip that we just showed. Right, that was Alana co Kelly. Co-choreographer. And, yes. um, and, and you, yay. Yes, and me. <laughs> yeah, <I'm laughs> much younger me. Um, <laughs> Alana, um, Alana Kelly um, uh, co-choreographed the mob with you, and then you and Alana recorded the videos, a step-by-step -step video of the choreography. Right. Why? Uh, we created a step-by-step, because -step my, my thought was I wanted everybody to do it on the same day in different parts of the country. So I had uh, selected captains from different parts of the country to do the mob, so that was the training video. Um, but what I didn't learn, didn't know, which was really cool, was that a lot of local people who couldn't come to rehearsal used those videos mm -hmm. and then just joined us during the mob day. So there were a lot more people than I was expecting. It was awesome. Yeah, so there was a group of folks who were rehearsing together um, in a dance studio in Oakland. And then, um, and as you said, some folks from other places in the Bay who were rehearsing on their own that joined those Oakland folks in downtown San Francisco. And right. where, else, where else did people bop? Um, there's actually a little tiny one in LA, and I'm very proud of them. Um, <laughs> there was going to be one in Florida. <laughs> I saw them rehearse, but it didn't happen. Um, where else? I think those were the places uh, that that participated. I can be next time I do it. I know what to do now to make it better. Mm -hmm. um, and e because you'd done extensive event planning, but never a mob. Yeah, never, never, never a flash mob. Um, so for folks who are interested, you can actually, the LA mob, there are a couple of videos of them on YouTube. If you just search Fat Flash Mob Los Angeles, I think those will come up. And um, and the video tutorial that we're talking about is available still on right. YouTube. Um, there was something interesting that happened, which for many of us was our first time experiencing it. Um, when you released those videos on YouTube, what happened? Besides the fact that people joined in to dance, what was the other thing that happened? Right. Um, we got trolled a lot. We got trolled a lot. We ended up, I, here's the way I think it happened. I think somebody saw us, they must have typed in the word fat to troll, saw us, sent to the Fat Logic. Fat Logic, sent, fat Logic was a, um, what do you call that, Tigress? It was, it was a website hate from, group. what's that? Say again? Hate group. Yeah, it was a hate group, but it was branched off another hate group. I mean, another uh, Reddit, I think. Right. Okay. Thank you. Reddit had little subgroups, and Fat Logic was a hate group. And I think they came over, and they were just—they tried really hard to bring it down. But I—I I, I was blessed with some soldiers um, from Facebook, from different groups that came in and just kept us lifted up. They tried really hard, and we learned about, like we were talking, we learned about. Um, 
land whale and ham planet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they brought out all the classic fat insults and some very all, all of them fat insults. All the earthquakes happening in San Francisco, and oh, they went and McDonald's. You know, all went to McDonald's afterwards, like all yeah. that. That happened a lot, but um, but you know, welcome to my life. That that's not enough to deter me. You know, like a fat chick from Sacramento. I've been teased all my life, so you got to come really hard and really smart. So yeah, that happened. And that was like, wow, okay, whatever. We're just going to be out there. Yeah. For folks who don't know, there's a whole, um, there's a whole collective of mostly cisgender straight white men, um, who Mm -hmm. hate fat people and especially hate outspoken fat women, um, or femmes or anyone they perceive to be outspoken fat women. And, um, and they use the term fat logic to, um, as a label for what they see as excuses fat people use to stay fat. Um, right. and so that's the sort of banner that they fly, is that they are of superior logic to anyone who's trying to live their life in a fat body without shame. Right. And, um, and, that it, and consequently, they will try to shame you back into living in shame. And right. um, yeah, the fat, fat flash mob was a really powerful um, pushback on that and it was fun that's the thing when we were out there i noticed a lot of people smiling and enjoying us and you know uh especially the tourists were like oh of course this is san francisco of course something like this is going to happen and i'm here to see it so um a lot of people were happy that we were out there including us we we didn't care about them they were not the point we were the point we were so the fact that they enjoyed us was just you know icing So we're not going to show too many clips today because we want to just focus mostly on getting to hear from Juicy, but I do want to show one more clip uh, before we go on with more thoughts from Juicy, and that is another clip from Julie Wyman's documentary, and this one you're going to actually see the mob as um, as it unfolds on the streets of San Francisco. a lot of you know arms wide open presenting like here I am I'm glorious I'm dancing out loud like just not being afraid to be heard or seen and being seen as a full human being I think the fat flash mob is more about the people doing it than it's about who is gonna end up watching and I want a little bit of empowerment to speak in to go out and stand a little taller live a fuller life that's a whole lot to ask for in a three-minute dance. just one person realized, hey, I don't have to feel bad. I don't have to hide or I don't have to, you know, not participate in life. Look at these people. They're out there doing it. I can do that too. Anything you do as a fat person that's not oriented to losing weight is political. Because the whole world is set up to tell you that your body is wrong and that if you accept your body, you are wrong. That, like there's something deep about you because you accept the body that you live in. So getting a whole bunch of people who live in fat bodies and are okay about that, that's revolutionary. <laughs> Now I'm that chick that would just get out on the floor if I felt like dancing, I'm just gonna dance. Like, there's no one out there, I'm out there. I wasn't that person before, and now I'm that person. And now I want to be. 
want to make more of those people. Just get out of here. Juicy, do you think that you succeeded in that goal that you stated at the end that you wanted to make more of those people who will just get out there and dance? I certainly hope so. Um, you know, sometimes you put things out and you don't always get returns immediately. Uh, so I, I'm sure somebody, one person got a little bit freer. I'm sure we all got a little bit freer. Um, so yeah, I, I, I think I, I hope I did, but I think I did. Now, I know that um, because of your history in burlesque and you're, you know, f famous as an MC and you have all these artists and dancers around you, that there were people who participated who were people who danced in front of people before. But were there also people who participated who'd never danced in front of people? Yes, there are people, <laughs> and I love them. They're, they're my favorite because they were the one, they were the ones that took the risk. They were the ones who are like, now's the time if i'm gonna go out there and shine at least i'll be surrounded by like like-minded and like-bodied people um and they did it and i love it and we had some uh disabled people who had never really danced in public out there dancing with us um so yeah there there were people who were like well what happens if we'll deal with it when whatever happens and uh we'll unfortunately together. nothing happened was there people, any people there, enjoyed us? Was there any negative feedback in person? Not in person, and not to me. Yeah, I, I was I was waiting. Like, bring it. I'm ready. I'm solid today. I'm surrounded by my people, and um, and yeah, there was there was no there was no the only negative feedback we got were a bunch of online trolls. You know. Yeah, there was a second round of trolling when the videos of the mob started to be released. Right. Right. Um, there was another round of trolling. Um, right. But I just, I want to highlight something you just pointed out that um, the, the dance choreography included a set of moves for people who needed to do the performance or wanted to do the performance seated. Yeah. Um, and that is not something that you very often see in a flash mob unless it is explicitly about disability rights or something like that, that people right. actually make an effort to be accommodating that way. Why was that important to you? Uh, because our fat family are in scooters and um and need help walking and needed to sit but want to participate they get to live too they get to dance too so uh that's why i wanted i wanted everybody included if if you wanted to get out there and dance i wanted to make sure that you were able to that was important um I just, I want to pause for a little footnote here. I should have taken a moment at the top to thank Ifa Sheena from ABC Soul Line Dance, who does um, an, a fully accessible all bodies dance class in Oakland and who has loaned us her Zoom connection. Uh, Yay. Their, their Zoom connection for this, um, for today's recording and also for the webinar that we originally did with Juicy a couple weeks ago. Thank you, thank Ifa you. Sheena. And uh, please do check out their dance classes. Um, they really are one of the most all body centered. She's uh, amazing. And she does the same thing. She has someone seated so that, or she will teach you herself um, seated so that you can dance from your seat. So yeah, thank yeah. you Ifa Sheena. She's awesome. We also did, um, we also did a NAFA webinar with them. So there is, if you go to the NAFA website, nafa.org, and look at our webinar page, you can see a past webinar with Eva Sheena, and they are leading their class and also talking about what it means to do this kind of dance. Um, and I know that Juicy and Eva Sheena share uh, a philosophy that dance is one of the most life affirming things. That Absolutely. You Absolutely. Um, and so that was one of the reasons we decided in the in the midst of this pandemic that this was the right time to celebrate this incredible fat dance. Um, event that had had happened you know in the community and um what happened after that dancing so we just saw the clip of the dance and everybody danced together and then what yeah and then i went home and slept for a very long time took a nice long shower and went to sleep um something that someone pointed out to me that i did not know at the time that i was a participant in the dance uh -huh. we we went, uh, we danced there at the cable car turnaround in San Francisco, which is a mm -hmm. highly populated area, as Juicy said, many tourists. Then we um, took public transit to a couple other places in San Francisco. Oh, that's what you're talking about. Oh, oh, okay. And this explains why I went to sleep. So after we left the cable car, we went to the Castro and we danced there and we took a lot of, and the, there was a, a construction site happening. And we, they were very sweet. We said, can you just stop for like 
four minutes so we could do this dance and we'll get out of your way. Mm -hmm. And they said, fine. And they enjoyed us and they clapped for us. And then they let us take pictures all over their equipment. <laughs> it was awesome. I think it was probably a nice little break for their day too. So yeah, so we did in the Castro. And then from there, we walked to Dolores Park and we did it one more time. And then, um, and that was fun because we did that in front of a bunch of cisgendered straight men, straight white men, and uh, and shook them up. Obviously, we shook them up a little bit. And then a bunch of us branched off and went off to eat. And then I went home and slept. Yes. <laughs> so. And the thing that I did not know on the day that we did that was, you know, our second stop was the Castro Muni Station. Um, for those who aren't familiar with San Francisco, yeah. Castro is a neighborhood that is um, uh, iconic um, gay neighborhood. And the Muni, Muni is one of the public transit systems in San Francisco. What I That's did now the Harvey Milk Station. Right. Yes, it is. And I... Um, and if you've seen shots of San Francisco with the giant rainbow flag, it's at that Muni station. So yeah. it really is a center point of the Castro. What I did not know at the time we did the flash mob there was that about 25 years, I think about 25 years previous to the flash mob, there had been an event there called Leaho, which was also stood for Let It All Hang Out. I learned about this from Mo Kalman, um, nice. who was uh, a fantastic fat activist and a longtime organizer of the San Francisco Dyke March. And I was talking to Mo about the mob, and Mo said, Did you feel your um, fat foremothers there when you went to the Castro? Wow. Well, the, for uh, the people who don't know, Let It All Hang Out was this public display of. Um, shaking your fat in little clothing at the Castro um, Muni station. And it happened, I believe, in protest to some, there were some articles in um, a local queer publication that were talking about how there were too many fat women at the Pride events letting their fat hang out. And the fat women said, we'll show you. And yeah, like, all right, you ready? Hold my beer. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And so, um, so anyway, so it was fantastic to learn later that um, that there was this connection between those. That's two awesome. Two I did not know that, Tigress. Thank you. Of course. That's yeah. awesome to know. Yeah. Yeah, and we have, you know, I, I think, um, I think maybe this is a good point to transition to like how you came into the world of fat activism. Because I think that a lot of people who have only learned about body positivity through social media in the last decade or right. so think that body positivity is a new concept. But of right. course, those of us who are activists know that we do have four mothers and four fathers and four parents <clears throat> in the movement for fat, um, for fat rights. Of course, NAFA celebrated 50 years last summer. Right. Um, and, you know, and other um, important, you know, fat lip reader, fat lip theater, and um, there's all kinds of other really important foundational fat rights that go back to the 60s and before. Um, when did you encounter the movement? I encountered that um, when I moved to San Francisco in 89. Uh, I encountered it and um, I was kind of on the periphery. Like I didn't know what it was being, you know, I didn't, I didn't know. And then I took a class with uh, someone named Haya Gordon that I just recently got reconnected with. Oh, so excited. Haya Gordon had a class called Abundance, Abundance. And it was for um, fat people who just wanted to move because she was a, she was a ballet dancer who had gotten fat. So um, I went there and, uh, and yeah, and, and got my, and felt like I got my life back from her. I felt like I got my body back because being a fat person, you really are not encouraged to move publicly. That's another reason why I did the fat, the fat flash mob. Everybody wants you to exercise, but if you actually go out and exercise, then they want to beat you up for being out. So apparently right. we're supposed to exercise or move our bodies at home in the dark under a sheet. Anyway. Right. So, right. And I do remember that we, we mentioned that the fat flash mob originally was held around the time of International No Diet Day, but there was another connection, which was National for Sports and Fitness Week or something like that. Uh -huh. Yeah. Right. So, um, so yeah, so that's when I first got a taste. And then I, um, then I learned about Fat Lip Readers Theater and I saw them perform. And then Marina Wolf had this um, 
who was the, uh, she's the former leader of um, Big Moves. And um, they had their first concert at St. Mary's College. Mm -hmm. And then I was in, like, oh, I get it. I'm fat and I get to move. Because I always loved to dance as a kid. Always. So dance really um, was the thing that brought you into the movement. Say it again? Dance really was what brought you to fat politics. Pretty much. Dance is what got me in. Dance is what's like, oh, I get to move. Movement is what got me in. Yeah, dance. Um, and then I started learning other things. Um, and, then, and then people started calling me an activist. And I didn't really take that on because I didn't feel like I was an activist. What I was trying to do was live my life, mm -hmm. right? I was trying to live my life. And, other, and, and apparently through that, I was helping other people live their lives, right? Yeah. Which do you is take why, that on now? Uh, you said huh? you, you didn't really take that on at first. Do you take that on now? Do you claim absolutely. that title? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because now, now I see how it works. My personal model is if you free yourself, you free others. And, um, and that's what I've learned to be true. Like as I free myself in doing what I want to do, people see me and like, okay, then maybe I can do that too. You know, uh, a fat chick can say, oh, I get it. I can be a stripper too, or I can have a fat troop as well, you know, or, yeah. or whatever. Well, let's talk about your fat troop. How did you go from taking your first dance class to becoming the founder and artistic director of a, a sort of nationally renowned burlesque troupe? Um, I danced with Heather McAllister, uh, and she was the founder and director of, um, gosh, is it Fat Bottom? Fat Bottom Review. No, there's a Big Burlesque. That's the name of it. Big Burlesque and the original Fat Bottom Review. So I danced with her for two years. And then, um, and then I stopped dancing with her for a little bit. And then um, I missed it. I missed dancing. I missed being in a troupe. So I decided to start my own troupe. And I did. Uh, I don't know. I still to this day don't know how I did it. It was, it was like... I'm going to do this thing. So I'm going to do this. Okay. If I do this, I need to do this, you know, okay. Get, get the space so we can rehearse. Okay. Got it. All right. I need dancers. Okay. Got them. Oh shoot. We're going to need costumes. Get them. Oh, now we're going to need to dance somewhere. So let me find out where people are dancing. Okay. Go there. Um, so it was kind of like I was blindfolded, just kind of feeling my way, feeling my way through. Um, were, you, um, were you really tied into the burlesque world before you started your own troupe or were you? No, you were not awesome at all. Well, through? that was the thing. Um, uh, Big Burlesque really wanted to be kind of over here in Insular for, uh, for a community. They wanted to serve that community. And I wanted to dance for everybody. Um, I, I didn't want to just dance here. I wanted to dance for everybody. Um, so I had to learn about the community and where they were. Um, so I had to do that on my, on my own. I didn't know. I, didn't, I had to find them. Thank God I found them uh, after the internet <laughs> had been created. So I was on Yahoo groups. Remember those? Yes. I was on Yahoo groups and things like that um, to, uh, to find out where to go how to dance, where to be, where the people are. I was on MySpace with Full Fame ah, Entertainment. Right. I, I, Juicy right. and I had a, a, a s somewhat similar timeline in, in two different worlds of nightlife. I was hosting a, a hip hop dance party um, just for people to come to the club and dance. And Juicy was, you know, doing this performance work in burlesque clubs. Um, but yeah, we it's I started in 2008. I think Ruben S. Burlesque was 2006, right? Sorry about that. Yeah. I also threw parties as well, mm -hmm. <laughs> if you remember. I also threw a couple parties uh, to find, um, there you go, to find fat people as well. And, so. um, and what, um, but like you did say that you, you threw some parties to find fat people, but you also wanted to perform as fat people in front of audiences that were not exclusively fat people. Why? Right. Exactly. I, I wanted to perform in front of everyone, um, particularly in front of, uh, I wanted to, I wanted my fat troupe to be mainstream. I didn't want to just be a niche. 
-hmm. I wanted us to be good and I wanted us to be respected um, throughout the community as a good truth. Not as the, the good, good, good fat truth. Um, I didn't mind that. I didn't mind that moniker either, as long as the good fat troop didn't mean it was less than. Right. Because sometimes people will do that. Oh, look at you. You're fat. You're great. Um, no, I want like, so, that's a good so troop. You're so brave for getting up troop. there in your body. Right. And we, and we still got that. Oh, you guys are so brave. Okay. Yeah. And, and constantly getting standing ovations made us even braver. Mm. How about that? So, um, yeah. So what was the first number you performed with Ruben S. Burles? Uh, it was, we performed at the Hooker's Ball for Scarlet Harlot. Uh, it was a 20s themed ball and we danced to When I Look in Your Eyes by Outkast, which had a 1920s feel to it. So we danced to that. That was our first, that was our first time out. How did you, um, how did people come to be members of Ruben S. Burlesque? Um, they would see us. They would find out about us. Um, I would post uh, in different groups, in different Yahoo groups, say, hey, I'm doing this thing. If you fit this description, if you are a size 16 or larger. Um, uh, we did a performance for Big Moves and someone out of that audience decided, oh, this is what I'm looking for. And uh, yeah, and she's doing she's doing well. She performs all over the world doing burlesque now as a fat performer. Um, teaching class for Day of Dance got me a couple of dancers. Uh, yeah. Um, what is Day Even, of Dance? Huh? What is Day of Dance? Day of Dance is um, internationally. There's a Day of Dance where. Um, all dance classes are free. Well, participating in studios have free dance classes. So you can go and try dance, uh, try dance class, see if you like it. So uh, with Big Moves, Big Moves has all, it's all day, it's a lovely event, and different styles. I've seen uh, Bollywood dance class there. I've seen uh, belly dance there. I do burlesque. I've been doing a burlesque class there for like, oof, I don't know, many, many years. Um, line dancing. Uh, I've seen all kinds of dances go through there. And are you still teaching burlesque? No, but I will be soon. I was going to teach burlesque this summer. And I think we know what happened with that story now, don't we? Um, so yeah, so I, when, when we open, I'm going to give it a few months and then I want to, I want to start teaching, uh, dance classes, the fat chicks again. I miss it. Have you considered doing any kind of virtual version of dance classes until we reopen? I don't know. What do you think? Do you think that would be a good idea to teach a online fat dance class? I mean, I think there are a lot of people who are looking for things to do. Okay. Um, and Maybe I, also, I will. I'm, well, I also think that, you know, like, as you said, it dance is incredibly life-affirming activity. Um, mm -hmm. But also, I think that in... in um, in our various states of quarantine, and I know that looks different across the country and around the globe, but um, one of the things that a lot of people are experiencing is a lot of body um, emotion around. <laughs> uh, like you, you might think that if you're just in your house, you're not seeing people. Well, then what? You're not even nobody else is even seeing your body. What difference does it make? But people's bodies are changing. Their access to food is changing. The pressure of um, of diet industry is actually changing. Like the, um, I hadn't noticed this so explicitly until I was in another workshop and um, activist Reagan Chastain mentioned this, that there has actually been an uptick in diet industry ads Right. And they realize that people are worried about gaining weight at home. So one of right. the things we've seen a lot of in activist circles is a lot of discussion about the way that people on social media are expressing their anxiety about getting fat while they are in quarantine and what that right. means in that community, right? Right. Um, and especially what that means in a moment where we are also highly aware that anti-fat discrimination as it exists in the medical world um, is part of what makes this virus more dangerous for fat people, right? Right. So all of this heightened awareness of uh, 
fat oppression, um, anti-fat attitudes in our community, and then capitalism exploiting that by diet companies actually producing more advertising to target those fears. Right. So, Sounds like a great time for fat people to strip on the internet and show people that they can do that. There we go. Okay. I'm in. Let me get my life together. I love that. Yes. You're right. Uh, Cause I, I hear a lot of people like, Oh, I'm gaining so much weight. And Oh girl, shut up. <sighs> well, what like, do you, what, what do you, Besides girl, shut up. We don't want to hear that public whining. But like if it's actually somebody who is, you know, one of your close friends was concerned that, you know, I just I'm having these these changes in my body and I don't like it. What do you say to them? I say if you're having if you want to change, feel free to change, but make those changes in love. Don't make them change those changes in hate. That's what I would say. Don't complain you're becoming fat and you think you're becoming ugly. If you're noticing you're not as strong as you were, get stronger. If you notice you don't have as much stamina, get stamina. But make those changes because you love yourself, not because you hate you hate yourself. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what I would tell them. Because, um, you, because I believe in body autonomy for everybody. You know, If you want to yeah. do something with your body, do something with your body. But do it because you love yourself. Not because you hate your body. Yeah, and one of the things that I think is interesting is, uh, always interesting slash frustrating slash annoying, is the way that people project their body stuff on someone else. Like, oh, yeah. We all have our own set of body stuff, whatever that is. I mean, even as somebody who has been, you like, I'm on the board of a national fat rights organization. And I still right. have my days where of course. I have, you know, that, that diet industry pressure or diet culture pressure, whatever people around me, I'm living in a different community now than I was when I became an activist and there's not as much positive reinforcement from this community. So that you know, like you have all the things, right? But I don't have to project those things onto other fat people. I don't right. have to assume that my bad day is your day, that my bad body is your bad body. Right. Um, you know, one of the things that, um, that is happening in the media now is there's this whole frenzy of people commenting on the singer Adele and her weight loss and then people commenting on the commenting on her weight loss. And, <laughs> right. And one of the people commenting on the commenting of her weight loss this particular week was Sharon Osbourne, who made a statement that, you know, she used to be a hundred pounds overweight and she lost weight and she just doesn't believe that anybody big, that any really big woman who says she's happy is really happy. What is that? First of all, let's be clear. Sharon Osbourne had the had WLS back when it was even more dangerous. She didn't lose the weight; the weight lost her. First of all. Second of all, um, how dare you say somebody can't be happy? Because because you couldn't be happy in that state does not mean other people cannot be happy in that state. Uh, that's that's really immature. I'm sad to hear she said something that stupid. I. Uh, I, I was as well, and, like, I, and I don't want to spend too much time on her, but I do want to talk a little bit about that idea that people have that like... Yeah, if, it's that, common. That, yeah, and the, that anger that people have that if you can be happy in that state, how dare you? Because I can't be happy in the state that I'm in. Exactly. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. Uh, and that's what I started to recognize when I started to... Um, when I started to, to get into body positivity and fat activism and all that is that it wasn't, you hate me because I don't hate myself. That's what it is. You hate yourself and you hate me because I refuse to hate myself, mm -hmm. um, which, is, which is really ridiculous. Um, is that why yeah, you chose and, the song Happy for the Flash Mob? Why did you choose that song? Because I would, my body would move every time it would come on. Um, it happened to be perfect. It happened to be um, perfect. And then just what you said, we are happy in our bodies. We are happy in our bodies. It may not be like your body, but it's our body and we're happy and we're outdoors. Um, and the song was just catchy. And, um, and I wanted to dance to it. It was just, it was perfect. It was a perfect song. And I think the, it being the perfect song did me a disservice because I want to do another one. And I cannot find a song that just moves me like that. I'm sure, I'm looking into Lizzo. I'm sure Lizzo's got something in her catalog that's going to make me want to go outside again. 
Um, but, yeah. Do you, uh, so tell folks where they can find you online so that if they have suggestions for you, if you're open to that, they can make I am. suggestions to you. Where can they um, find Juicy Delight online? I am Juicy Delight everywhere you go. Um, I am Juicy, J-U-I-C-Y, capital D period, capital L-I-G-H-T. You'll find me, if you type that in, you'll find me on Instagram, you'll find me on Twitter, you'll find me on Facebook. Um, what else we got? You won't find me on TikTok yet. I'm, I think I'm going to start doing TikTok. Do you like There's TikTok? There's a lot of dance on TikTok. Yeah. Do you like TikTok, though? I'm also new to TikTok. I am 45 and don't see that as historically compatible with TikTok, but it is changing. <laughs> <laughs> it is changing and I am open to it. I participated in a couple of the Don't Rush Challenge videos. Yes, you did. It was fabulous. Um, thank you. With other fat activists. So, I've heard, uh, so I'm on there for other people to see, but I don't use it very much. Right. Uh, yet. Uh, we're getting there. Um, but, um, but yeah, uh, so you can find me on those platforms if you want to jump into my DMs and give me a suggestion of a song uh, that's empowering and not fat phobic. Uh, Big Girls, You Are Beautiful. Will n I will never choreograph anything to that song, so please do not uh <laughs> please don't recommend that song to me um i i don't think that song is as fat positive as people believe but I, um, I find that about a lot of fat a lot of songs that are claimed by fat community as as anthems are um are actually are so problematic like, they're they're problematic in some way or they're not really about fat people or they're about fat people but then they disrespect somebody else or like there's so many yeah songs that are, yeah that are like that um I think yeah, like I do a number two, uh, Big Bottom by Spinal Tap. I know what that song is about, you know, like I, and I know, but I'm reclaiming it for us because I happen to like the song and I'm like, yeah, damn it. So I, um, um, I performed on Sweden's Got Talent with Gunnar Holmer, Gunnar Holma in, in Sweden um, uh -huh. a few years ago. And he, you know, had been invited to the show because of this number that he does to Baby Got Back, which right. I don't find to be a fat positive song at all because it actually literally says she's little in the middle, right? Right. Like, and so uh, I made him change that lyric when he was, you know, so he's like this, you know, Swedish comedy rapper. And, nice. Nice. Um, but we changed it to uh, she's a BBW. She got much back. Now, I, nice. BBW is not the most politicized term around fatness either. But yeah. Um, but at least it was a step closer to accurate because I was not right. in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. Not a thing. Um, now, there is one other place where I know folks can find you online that you did not mention, and that is on Facebook as Angry Black Woman. Tell us. Oh, right. That. Thank you. Right. Angry black woman, that's me. That's me. Thank you, Tigers. I totally forgot. Angry black woman. Um, Juicy's, uh, Juicy's burlesque tagline, I, I believe, is the angriest woman in burlesque. <laughs> yeah. Um, actually, that tagline was given to me. One of my taglines is, uh, she's built for comfort, not for speed. And Foxy Tan, of the Wham uh, Foxy Tan and the Wham Bam Thank You Mams, out of uh, the Midwest, gave me the tagline, the angriest woman in burlesque. <laughs> were you angry in the world of burlesque? Um, I think because we're also Facebook friends, mm -hmm. that, um, that there are many things that make me angry, and that's where I would, uh, Facebook is where I do most of my talking about things that make me angry, like fat phobia, homophobia, transphobia, racism, misogynoir, all those things make me angry, and when I come across them, which is daily, uh, I might say some angry words about them um, to also educate, like, to my friends, I'm a real person, you know me, this anger and stress is real and affects me daily. So, uh, so that's probably why she, yeah, so we followed So how did you get from her. the angriest woman in burlesque to having this um, acclaimed one woman show about being an angry black woman? Um, I was at a job where I was being underutilized. And I knew I was being underutilized because I'm a black woman. So, uh, yeah, so at that job, I, uh, it was actually for uh, GM Cruise. I was testing autonomous vehicles. And um, 
being way underutilized for a job that was way too simple. And uh, that's where I start to write. That's where I start to write the show. And then, uh, what and is, then it, go ahead. What's, what's going on with your show now? Oh, um, my show is, uh, on hiatus until I find it's supposed to be up in, um, at Mills college in September. And then hopefully I'll do a, a college tour. So, so also folks, if you're watching, listening, and you are affiliated with a university, Juicy is interested in, in yes. her one woman show at colleges and universities. So um, please do reach out to her and you can find her under angry black woman on Facebook. In addition to yes. all those Juicy Delight handles that she, um, that she mentioned. Right. Um, what else are you up to these days? What do you want people to know about what you're doing these days? Uh, what I'm doing besides cleaning my apartment is tightening up my one woman show uh, to tour um, and about to do a Zoom burlesque, a Zoom fat burlesque class. Thank you, Tigress. Uh, so look out for that because I really was going to wait. But now you're like, yeah, people are looking for stuff to do. And I'm sure bigger people are looking ways to feel good in their bodies. So that will be the angles. Feel good and sexy in your body Woo. through burlesque. Um, is there anything else that we haven't talked about that you really want people to know about your, about your history, about your activism, about your art, anything? I'm really just about everybody feeling good in your body, you know? Um, and when I say body positive, I mean I'm body positive. There are, I have friends that are skinny that cannot gain weight. And they get, they get harassed too as looking too boyish, not having big enough tits, you know, all of that stuff. So I really would like to see all women uh, feeling good in their body, regardless of size. Um, we don't exist for the male gaze. That's not, that's not why we exist. And that's why we get, that's why we get harassed. How dare you come out the house looking at a way that I don't like. You know, so uh, I'm looking forward to us feeling good in our bodies uh, and letting our bodies do what they do. Yeah, I think that's actually a beautiful note to end on. Um, I uh, just want to thank you again for your time. I want to thank everybody who tuned in to watch us. Um, we will eventually have a transcript of this up um, so that you can share it with folks who um, need to have that uh, need to have that tool available for them. Um, I will also remind everyone that NAFA's webinar series continues and we're adding additional webinars um, while folks are at various states of, um, of shelter in place just to give people more things to do. So please do go to nafa.org and check out the schedule for what's coming up. And also um, our NAFA webinars are free of charge and we are able to do that because of the contributions of people in the community. So if you are able to at this time, I know there are many things um, that need our contrib contrib contributions at this time. If you are able to add NAFA to your list, we certainly appreciate it. And um, I also just want to mention one other group that is doing some really important work at this time, and that is the Nobody is Disposable Coalition, which is doing nice. a lot of a lot of work around fat rights during the age of COVID-19. You should go to their website, nobodyisdisposable.org, and see the resources they have put together for you if you are a fat person about um, how to advocate for yourself if you need medical assistance, and especially if you need that in a place that is um, deprioritizing people that um, are in larger bodies. And um, and also, um, if you are an ally of any size who wants to do that kind of help for um, and re you know re creating more resources, more information, all of those things for people in all kinds of bodies that are being dis considered disposable at this time. We of course know that nobody is disposable. We love that name. We love the folks who are doing that work. So we want to um, thank them. Um, Juicy, thank you so much for your time today and for giving thank us. Thank you a replay opportunity to, to wisdom and right uh, we'll be looking out for juicy's upcoming burlesque class series who knew Yay. that i there. better see you there tigress we'll see me there we'll see all right sweetheart all the parts <laughs> thank you and Take thank care. you Rafa, for 50 years thank you thanks juicy bye everyone okay. thanks for tuning in okay cheers <laughs>